Welcome to my new home and headquarters, a great Indiana built product. In the next 100 days, we will travel to all 92 Indiana counties. Then we'll do it again and again, searching for ideas about the best ways to rebuild our state and for the homegrown talent to help us do it. Anyone who shares our determination to build a better Indiana is welcome in this RV and at the hundreds of places it will visit. So ladies and gentlemen, start the engine. We have six million neighbors. Now. Printing out the updated schedule. So this gang's here every day. They look great. I don't know which guy. I don't know which guy he's talking about. <laughs> Mitch, was it Phil or Will? Will. Will. Good nice to see you, Will. Man. How's business? He's Democrat. He's fine. Well, that's all. Well, that's a prohibition. Well, you know, hope you weren't counting on a speech. I mean, I... well, how many systems in Stuben County? We've been in business 23 years, and we've sold a lot of cars. We do engineering simulation. Yeah. For yeah. Um, like we're teaching down at Rolls Royce today. To yeah. 24 engineers for the next three days. One. And then George Bush spotted him and made him budget director. He resigned that little job and came back to Indiana to run for governor. So this is Miss Daniels. It doesn't feel like either the time or the place for a speech, so I won't subject you to one. I appreciate your uh, comment this morning that said you were not in competition with another candidate, you were in competition with the other states. Yeah. That's important what you said it because it's good to have a businessman on board and somebody can communicate that to the public and then get things going again, because that's sorely needed. I have a choice. I'm you do have a choice. Car with well, you, you do have a choice, <laughs> uh, and that's the fair thing about it. It's, it's nice planning. to meet you. Here, I want you to have this. All right, when you come up and go fishing with Paul, or go. Go. duck hunting. The fish won't even see me coming. You might get in front of these cameras, let them get up. Why are you here today? Uh, we're here for the reason we've been in 81 counties in 70 odd days, because uh, I don't think you could presume to seek to be hired for the office of uh, governor, which is why I look at this. If you're not uh, willing to throw yourself into it, go see Hoosiers where they live and all the places they live. And uh, first make an emphatic statement that Indiana's comeback has to be about all of us, all six million, and every community counts. But secondly, to uh, try to learn all one person can learn about the very different uh, problems and also different opportunities facing the very diverse uh, places that make up our state. I'm not running against anybody except the governors of other states who are taking our jobs. And um, I don't dwell on the problems facing the state. Most Hoosiers sort of know that we uh, really have some work to do. I'm trying to concentrate entirely on how we uh, get out of this hole and move forward. We've got to have more people and more businesses earning more money in this state on which they can pay taxes. Uh, otherwise, we'll always chase our tail in terms of uh, the, the state government's own finances, uh, which are busted right now and we'll not be able to make the further investments in education and um, better roads and, and so forth that, that uh, our citizens want and deserve. So the starting point has got to be to get ourselves organized, get back in the game, get the open for business sign back up on the borders of this state. And be careful there, you, oh. you're too sweet, you've attracted... Well, sweet see, things. I yeah. put cologne on, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, oh, and here I thought that was yours. <laughs> 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 Uh, this, you know, this being a candidate has not been all bad. Yeah. You can't eat the onions. Have you noticed this? I don't want to get in trouble here, Lennon. <laughs> but as the father of four daughters, I got to say, I do not understand this prom dress and wedding dress thing. I always say to the girls, I'm glad you're going to get this nice new dress, 
but how about you get one you could wear somewhere else in your life? Does that seem like an irrational suggestion? Yes, unfortunately. If you're running a dress shop. They need to shop at Elegance because I'll give them a better price so it won't hurt the dad's pocket book so much. <laughs> well, all right, but if you ever solve this problem of, you know, how about a prom dress you could wear again? I'm doing rentals. See, all right, I can go for this. Tuxedos. Yeah. Um, yeah. Men have um, yeah. been renting tuxedos Forever. for years, right? So I'm starting a whole line. A business I can really support. <laughs> and this is my friend Duke Cunningham. Duke, huh? I named my first dog Duke. <laughs> I love to hear you talk, you know. Well, I'm going to work for you, well, I, fellas. All right. She will, too. You not only became a Yankee, but a Republican. Now, something strange listen, went on listen. here. Listen, my grandfather voted for FDR yeah. in the South. You know, he used oh, to be yeah. solid everybody, Democrat. Everybody did. And when he ran the third time, Grandpa was 80-some, and he says he wouldn't vote because he didn't want anybody to be president for the three terms, uh -huh, yeah. but he couldn't vote against him. My this mother cried the night right she here, thought right that Woodrow here. Wilson, not Woodrow Wilson, who was the other guy? Anyway, she was an ardent Democrat. Right. But before she died at age 90, she was calling Republicans to get out You're and kidding. vote. Right you are, Dan. Uh, Mitch Daniels with me. And Mitch, uh, first of all, you know, I, I think a lot of people are familiar with you from the time uh, that you spent as budget director for this nation in the White House with uh, President George W. Bush. A lot of people might wonder why he gave you the nickname The Blade. Tell us about that. Billy is the leader of the free world, so if he wants to give somebody a nickname, you're pretty much stuck <laughs> with, with it. But uh, uh, I don't know. It came up early on. He uh, uh, he uh, asked me uh, when he hired me down in Austin, Texas in December 2000, and, well, was I prepared to do uh, things he wanted to do to try to make sure that taxpayers' dollars were well spent, not misspent. And uh, we worked hard on that for two and a half years together, and I guess that's uh, that's why he came up with it. Okay, now, as I understand it, you're, you're taking quite a tour of the state of Indiana, and we've got 92 counties here in the state, and you're going to hit every one of them. Yes, as, uh, as your uh, radio listeners can see, they're behind us. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, what we call RV1. It's a fine Indiana-built vehicle, and we've got about 12,000 miles on it in a couple, three months. Um, I've never run for office before, but I thought if I uh, ever did, I'd like to do it this way. I view it as a 16-month job interview with uh, 2 million personnel officers in this state. I'm out to see as many of them and, uh, as uh, I can individually. What is kind of the focus of your ca campaign? Um, you know, his is quality jobs. Well, he's 16 years late. You know, his side's been in charge for 16 years. They've been very tough years for Indiana, most of them. And uh, uh, so, but he's right about the... Uh, the issue. We've lost more jobs, more income than almost any state in the country, and we've really got to stop the tailspin, and there's no time to lose. There are other good people running for this uh, office. They've all spent their lives as career politicians or lawyers, and uh, that's, a, that's an honorable thing to do. But given the problems we face right now, I do think somebody from the world of business uh, who thinks about uh, investment in jobs as we want people to think about Indiana uh, probably has... Uh, a little uh, advantage. Quick eater. He always beats me to the punch. You learn on the road, you eat quick. You gotta go back to work. Well, he asked add, me add an afternoon. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, it is. Pretty yeah. good yeah. gimmick. I did this a long time ago. And he goes, okay. Well, I think I'm about ready to do it. Yeah. Profile well, well, and courage. He, he gets along with. Uh... We got all kinds of time now. You don't have to be in Albion well, for another two to. hours. With these guys, you can't really wind up. It's in the wrist. That didn't seem like a clear hit, do you think? No, it wasn't a clear yeah. hit. Yeah, see, uh, yeah, oh, you got him cornered anyway. Can't imagine that got him. Ride with us a little while, you'll, you'll get the technique down. There's one. Huh? I didn't see you guys getting any of them. One of them. One of them. There are two more. I know. Well, you know, you know what I, you know what I was hesitating for. There were two of them, almost this close together. I was going to go for a, t a twofer. You got the one on the bottom of your... Uh... 
Yeah. You get three more, you're an ace. <laughs> oh heck, I I rickenbackered out a long time ago. You give me credit for the entire conflict. Ugh, yuck. <laughs> hey Ben, I, Ben, I just made a little mess of your uh, notebook. I hope that's all right. I also left you some carnage on the wall back there. You can fix that. Hey, see, they like the floor right here. Two. I don't have a confirmed kill on that one. <laughs> we may be clean here. We may be, we may be fly free. I can't be sure. All right. I'll keep my weapon at close range just in case. I guess, uh, did, did we think to send Adam over to um, Auburn to have a look? Sort of the concept of the advance man. Draft horse, pony, and mule ground drive. Ground drive. Judging at four. 500 feet. Ground drive. I gotta confess, that like a, that's the animal equivalent of a tractor pull. I can't wait to hear your report. Call me on your way home. That's how I. <laughs> how do you how do you pick a winner here? You in the competition here? No, I'm not. Where is it? There's a judge here somewhere? Got a favorite here? Got an entrant? No. Just a spectator too? What dictates the winner here? How we... I, I just got here, so I don't know exactly what they're supposed to do. Oh, okay. I guess the guy in the red and white hat will let us know eventually who the winner is, huh? Hey, then. Daniel's my name, Mitch. That run for governor of Indiana. Just made, you. made a little unscheduled stop here just because we had a little oh, extra you didn't time. Know it was going to be up to Hamilton and I, I just came down from there, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yep. We're headed, we're headed for Albion, but we don't have to be there for a little while. It's nice. Oh, we, you know, we go looking for people where we can talk to people and learn a little something, so here we are. Well, you're talking to a bad guy to learn anything. Well, how's that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's your name, sir? LaRue. Alan LaRue. Mr. LaRue. I don't know. I bet a guy could learn something from you. You're just hiding it. I know. Well, like, for instance, I bet you can tell me how to tell whether this guy's doing well or not well. Right, I do. Okay. <laughs> it's how your horses stay together uh -huh. and yeah. react. Are they, should they be right in step? Now these no, they don't have step. to be in step, but they do have to be they have to be aligned. Yeah, when they turn the corner, the yep. horses should stay even. With right, each other. right. The outside horse should keep up. All right, and presumably not separate too far. Right. Okay. And then, then they drive up there. Yep. They should back up straight, not spread out. Right. Straight to you. Right. Where's the backup? I, right. Oh, right here. I see. Yep. Okay. Well, see, and you told me I wouldn't learn anything talking to you. <laughs> How are you? The state economy is something people have talked a lot about. What's your plan for getting the economy going again? Uh, you know, it did, it'll be harder to climb out of this hole than it was to fall into it, so it won't be any one magic bullet. High step plus testing has been going on recently. A lot of people would like to have that in the fall. There's others who like to have it in the spring. Some people would like to do away with it entirely. Where do you stand on that? Well, I'm very much for testing, first of all. You know, I used to say in, we used to say in business, if you're not keeping score, you're just practicing. And it's very important uh, that we know how our kids are doing, uh, not to be harsh with anybody, but uh, so uh, we can uh, identify where we need to improve. Um, so uh, ISTEP makes a real contribution to that. I, my impression is, from talking to teachers all over the state, which I've been doing everywhere I go, that uh, uh, there may be ways to streamline it. It may be uh, that we can learn what we need to know about our performance in education. Uh, in ways that uh, allow more time for teaching in the classroom.
Mil gracias para su apoyo. Now just to let the rest of you in on it. <laughs> Leonard. Well, what a perfect setting uh, for the end of our first lap. And uh, the conclusion of the first three months of our 16-month job interview with the people of Indiana. As you know, we've now finished 92 counties in 91 days. And the green flag somebody was waving there is, of course, to signify that we may be off to a fast start, but the checkered flag is a long, long way off. I know you all know this. Although this is only lap one, I get here today with a head full of insights and a heart full of friendships and experiences that I will always treasure. Let me tell you that we have been privileged to take in in these last 91 days the full beauty and variety of this great state we call home. Up north, we have seen Amish ladies rollerblading at Bluffton. I have seen the most ingenious warehouse down south in Marengo carved into the side of a mountain. We finished one day recently down in southwest Indiana on the most beautiful farm with beautiful Indiana farmland as far as the eye can see in all directions and had our first appointment at 9 a.m. the next morning in downtown Gary at an African-American church. And let me tell you, the people were equally beautiful in both places. And just because we couldn't resist the name, we took one of our famous side trips the other day, found a place, even folks in this county I was in, Davies County, many said they'd never visited. And we went out and spent a little time with Mary Purcell and her son Buck, one of six homeowners in the little town called Comeback. At every stop and every night on the road, I have been welcomed into the homes of ordinary Hoosiers. I've stayed in guest rooms, spare rooms, and lots of kids' rooms. <laughs> I wouldn't trade those evenings uh, or all the ones to come for anything for the learning I've gotten sometimes in that last hour before bedtime around somebody's kitchen table or in their den has been just as priceless as the things we did all day. Everywhere I go, there is an alarm and a concern about the loss of jobs and income and the loss of hope in this state. And it was never better summed up than on a Saturday afternoon up in Columbia City about a month and a half ago when a couple 300 young people who got together, I don't know how, calling themselves Young Hoosiers from Mitch, threw us a hog roast. And when people arrived, they were met with the banner, the theme of the event, which was, we want to stay. And if I were to sum up why we're here today and why we're on the road every day, it's because we want young people like that, young people with talent and dreams and aspiration who want to live their lives and build their careers in Indiana to know they can do it. If there were a place in this state where people were unaware of our difficulty, where people thought things were just going just fine, um, I'd have found it by now. I don't recite the statistics. You don't have to. People know. They've seen it close hand. They've seen it in their own towns. Our effort, friends, is not about criticism of those who are in government or those who have led the current regime these last 16 years. They are good people. They are Hoosiers like us. But it's a simple fact that the folks who presided over our decline and presided over the decay of the quality of service in state government are not the people to bring us back. We must be about the business of lifting our sights and standards as a state. One of the great American businesswomen built a great company around the slogan, good enough never is. And we have to think like that in Indiana today, whether it's our expectations of our educational system our expectations of ourselves in our own personal health, even the ethical expectations we ought to have in the conduct of the people's business. We cannot shoot for the stars if we don't aim higher than we do today. Likewise, it's come home to me in those other 91 counties that we must begin to think like one state. 
When we lose a job in Angola, we are diminished here. We are sharing one state tax base, and increasingly, we are taxing the areas of prosperity, as we should, and sharing the money with the areas that are struggling. But when we lose a job in Muncie, it's your problem too. And when we gain a job in Plainfield, don't be jealous. Understand that that's a victory for us all. In the shape we are in, we cannot afford to be divided. And I will be asking all Hoosiers, all 6.1 million Hoosiers, to come together around our agenda. It is simply unacceptable for us to stand by as citizens and allow this decline to continue any longer. I prefer to adopt the mentality of a friend's uh, little league son whose game I went to watch a few years ago. He was playing left field. When I got there, I walked up to the fence and said, Eddie, what's the score? He said, we're down 14 to nothing. I said, ouch. I said, you know, you really shouldn't look so happy. He said, oh, no problem, Mr. Daniels. We haven't been to bat yet. <laughs> Our state's falling behind, but our turn at bat is coming. Of all the encounters and all the experiences that I have already had in 91 days, there is one that stands apart. And many of you know about it, but very few of you know all of it. And so I want to share it with you now. And it, it started after dinner in Kentland, Indiana on a fine summer evening a couple of months ago. We're having visited with some of the local folks all day. A lady I'd been with, 69-year-old assessor up there, named Janice Wilson said to me, do you play any musical instruments? I said, oh, Janice, I wish, not since junior high. Why? She said, well, when we're done eating, I gotta go to band practice. I said, band practice? What kind of band are you in? She said, I'm in the Newton Jasper Community Band. I thought that sounded like the cutest thing I ever heard. I'm, you know, Mr. Spontaneous here. I said, I'd love to come to band practice. Next thing I know, we're walking into South Newton High School. I'm carrying her saxophone case for her. She leans over to me. She says, I'm a widow lady, you know, and this will be very good for my reputation. <laughs> We get in there, and just as advertised, there's 50-some folks, you know, tuning up all walks of life. And I'm going around greeting them, and to my great delight, the, the leader, Joy, hands me the baton and says, Well, here, why don't you take us through the first number? And off we go. John Philip Sousa, Washington Post March. It was fantastic. On my way out the door, a little lady in the French horn section says, if you get elected governor, can we play at your inaugural? <laughs> Where's Dan? Dan, you're a veteran. I'm a rookie candidate. I was not so green, I did not know the answer to that question. <laughs> which was yes, ma'am. <laughs> now, there's an epilogue to this story, which I wish I did not have to tell you. Some three, four weeks ago, my saxophone playing friend Janice Wilson passed away. Uh, suddenly, unexpectedly, but painlessly and peacefully. And I was much affected by this because of what that evening had meant to me, and still does. And uh, we were headed for Lake County one day shortly after I heard the news, and I phoned ahead and asked, I, wanted, I phoned her daughter and I said, I just want to come by and pay my respects. When I got there, uh, there were three or four generations of Wilsons. There were grandkids and siblings and fiancés, I think, in a little farmhouse on Route 63. And we had the most marvelous sharing, talking about this wonderful Hoosier life. And uh, about Grandma and, oh my goodness, you're here. It, it was, a, was a day that will always stay with me as with Janice's picture, which I asked for. And if you take a little tour of the RV, there's only one picture in there except for my girls. It's right above the door. Or I can see it, maybe give it a tap on the way out to an event like this. 
Let me tell you the best part to me. You know, I, I tried to explain what the evening had meant to me, how much fun it was, but also how, you know, touched I was. And uh, the family said, uh, Janice too. They said that that was one of the nicest things or more fun things that happened to her in the last stretch of her life. And they said, she told everybody in Newton County, that boy's gonna win and we're gonna play. <laughs> I just came here to tell you, they are going to play. I'm going to see to it. You're going to help me do it. Yeah. 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 And when the music stops, we're going to take a new crew of people, talented and idealistic, and many of them capable of doing things that pay far more and involve much less stress than we'll ask them to undertake into state government with us. And when our turn at bat comes, we will put Indiana back in the game. We will put Indiana back in the game and we will give Hoosiers back the quality of state government and the economic hope they deserve. Thank you for coming. God bless y'all. How sweet of you to honor our mother like that. Have you been in there? We saw it. Yes, we did. People come up and say, I feel like I know her, you know, or it sounds like my mom. They say stuff like that. I'm going to make them put an em empty chair in the saxophone section. Oh. They are playing. My señor Mitch. Oh. Eh? Y hay muchos miles más que si están... es posible para una persona... It's Seymour, that's right. That was an important stop for me. I learned a lot there. Yeah, really What's this guy's name here? I appreciate your uh, speech. It's an honor to meet you. Good Squeeze. Luck, bitch. Squeeze. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That's Michael. It. I'm Daphne Hoppus. Yeah, right. I'm hey, with Daphne. Your, uh, PSI Energy. I run a power plant. Atta boy, Addison. Oh, man. We're going to build our I'm shirt. Leonard, I saw your brother last night. Yeah, he told me. She's got it. You got it. My husband's always on the teeter totter and having to move out of state, so we definitely want to stay. Yeah, we got a lot of work to do. You, you Thank you. Like you just want my lemonade? <laughs> we'll just see any of our folks over here. We'd love to have you. All right. Hey, study hard. Thinking about college yet? Yeah, I pretty much know where I want to go. Where's that? I either want to go. I have three choices. Yeah. Georgetown, Hampton, or Northwestern. So your message is, is positive, and we need that. Appreciate all right, Brady. How you been? We're behind you all the way, but Just fine. All right. You been doing all right? I've been doing really good. Well, what happens after today? Uh, we're on the road tomorrow morning. We're going to Scottsburg and uh, New Albany, and uh, probably some places we'll make up along the way, as we usually do. So you're going to continue going.